Hello again. We are here with our substation and our miniature AC power grid system at BTC's instrumentation lab. We want to discuss or to demonstrate here a different sort of fault on the system. In one of the other videos, we showed a fault on the bus of our substation, an internal bus fault, and we demonstrated how the 87 relay would detect that fault and trip the breakers. What we want to do now is demonstrate an external fault, one that is not within the substation, but rather lies outside of it. So to give you a lay of the land here, we have one generator that's running. Diablo Miner is currently running, and its breaker is closed. Right now, all of these breakers on the Stevens substation are open. You can see they're all green, they're all tripped. So the Diablo generator has no way of getting its power to that bus. We have placed a fault on this transmission line. We have shorted one phase to another at the very end of that line, really at the, at the entrance to the other substation, Nooksack. And what's going to happen then, when we close breaker number four, that's going to energize the bus of Stevens, and that by itself will not pose any problem. But once we close breaker one after closing four, that's going to heat up that transmission line where the fault is at. What's going to happen is that's going to be a direct phase-to-phase -phase fault on the line that will draw a large amount of current from the generator. All that current will pass through the Stevens substation and back as it returns, and that's going to load down the generator. It's going to be a very heavy load. In fact, we will be able to hear the generator labor under that load. And very soon thereafter, the overcurrent relay on the generator will trip. It will have a time overcurrent trip. In this case, we have so much impedance along the way that even a direct bolted fault does not result in an instantaneous overcurrent trip, but just time overcurrent. So it's going to take a few seconds. It's going to trip out. Most importantly, what I want to demonstrate is that our 87 bus differential protection here will not trip because the protection zone for 87 bus differential is simply the bus and the breakers themselves. The protection zone for the 87 is limited to this. So this is a demonstration of the selectivity of this protection, where this is able to protect for faults within the substation bus, but it ignores faults lying outside the bus. That's what protection should do. You should never have a relay that trips outside of its zone, ideally if the protection scheme is set up properly and everything's wired the way it should be. So, we'll demonstrate this. We will introduce the fault to the system. We will hear the generator labor under that fault. And once the generator's breaker trips, we're going to take a look at the 87 bus differential and see that it has not tripped. So, here it goes. First step, I'm going to close breaker number four. That is going to connect the Diablo Miner generating station to our substation bus. So here we go, breaker number four is closed. I'm looking up there, we see a red light on breaker number four, so right now that bus is heated. It is hot and is ready to power something. In this case, the thing we're going to be powering is that shorted fault on that transmission line. So now, after closing breaker four, I will close breaker one, and that will introduce the fault to the system. Again, listen carefully to the sound of the generator in the background. You'll hear it labor as I introduce the fault. So here we go. And that click sound you heard was the generator actually coming offline. It tripped on overcurrent. Notice this did not trip. None of the tar targets are showing. Our lockout relay did not trip. These breakers are still in their states I set them in. Breaker number one is red. It is closed. Breaker number four is still red. It's also closed. Nothing has tripped at the substation. What did trip was the generator. So walking over here. This is the Diablo Miner generating station that we see on its relay. We had a, a time overcurrent fault on phases A and B, which makes sense because those are the two phases that we shorted at the other end of that transmission line. In this system, that's the only protection we have set up. We have protection at each generating station, and then we have protection at the substation bus. On a real working power system, we would also have another zone of protection that wraps around the transmission line itself. We haven't got to that point yet. We just got our substations running this summer. We're happy we got that done. We do not, as of yet, have line protection on our transmission line. That could take the form of what's called distance protection, which is ANSI code number 21. It could also take the form of line differential protection, which is another type of 87 current differential. We do not have the equipment to do either of those at this point either. We eventually would like to do that. So for right now, the only protection our system has is the bus differential on the substation bus, and each generator has its own overcurrent. But we did this demonstration simply to show 
how the protection offered by the bus differential at the substation is selective. It is able to discriminate between an internal fault in the substation and something external like this where it relies on some other relay system to clear the fault.